really understand the ten plagues without understanding the burning bush. And particularly, one thing that the Lord God says to Moses on that holy mountain. He says these words, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings, and I have come down to deliver them. This is a most striking statement, something that should rattle your cage, should knock you off your chair, should blow your socks off. This is a window into who our God is, a God unlike any other God that the human heart has contrived. No other God listens or hears or knows the suffering. Well, he may be powerful enough to know the suffering, but why does he care about the suffering? But most of all, none of these made-up gods come down to deliver. They cannot be troubled with such little things. And yet, this God, the living God, is the one who knows our suffering, who has heard our cries, who has seen our suffering, and comes down to deliver. He comes down to deliver that all the world would know that there is a God who is mighty to save. So, ten plagues to the Egyptians. The Egyptians, the most powerful army, the most powerful presence in the, in the world up until this point, are rattled to their very foundation by this living God who visits them and saves. But you know, all of this is really to point to that very last part of the Lord's statement. I come down to deliver. This God is in these ten plagues and in all of the work of the prophets and in the words which have come, promises foretelling the one who comes ultimately to take away all of the sin of the world and to grant peace by his stripes, this Jesus. So the ten plagues, water into blood, and frogs, and gnats, and flies, the livestock die, boils, and hail, and fire, locusts eat up their crops, darkness, and the death of the firstborn. Perhaps we could pinpoint to the last two, darkness. You know, right as Jesus hung on the cross, there was deep darkness over the whole earth. And then the firstborn dies. Well, the Lord, his own firstborn, his only begotten, dies upon the cross. Dies for you and me, takes away the sin of the world, comes down to deliver, and there it is, all accomplished for you and me, a mighty one to save. And this beautiful picture of the mercy, the long-suffering, the continued compassion of our God is seen in Jesus. Thus, all of these things foreshadowing the one who saves, the one who constantly hears your cries, sees your afflictions, knows your sufferings, and still even now comes to save. Thanks be to God.